Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Workers of Reddit, what is your best, well, I'm getting fired, moment at work? What were the consequences? Part 2. I fall asleep at the wheel in the middle of nowhere, end up having the best day ever while not getting fired after destroying company property and yelling at my boss. One time, about a decade and a half ago or so, in my mid-twenties, I was driving between jobs in Montana as a data-slash-telecom tech. The drive was about five hours after having already worked long hours at the end of a long week. The week had caught up to me and I dozed off on the freeway while going about 75 miles per hour. Luckily, there was no one else on the road really when I crashed. I woke up just as the crappy pickup I had been driving veered off to the left towards the grassy center median. The front driver's side tire had just moved off the pavement, which was about 3 inches higher than the rocky shoulder, and I tried to correct it, but it was too late. The truck did a 180, and I ended up far off the right shoulder, backwards running down a good portion of state fencing that lined the freeway. I think I passed out because I woke up to the voice of an older gentleman. He helped me get out of the vehicle and checked to make sure that I was alright, which I was, besides a small cut on my elbow. The old guy was the sheriff of a nearby small town and offered to have my pickup towed by his sister's husband's shop. I agreed and he took me back to the police station. On the way, he started asking me how the accident happened and I told him that I saw a small animal out of the corner of my eye, like a cat or a raccoon, and I kind of just reacted out of instinct. He bought my story and he told me not to worry about the damage to the fence. When we got to the small town, he gave me a little ride-along tour and mentioned all little businesses where he was related in some way or another to the owners. It really started to get surreal when we arrived at the station and there was only one or two holding cells right there in the main office when you walked in. I met the sheriff's wife, whom held many positions herself. City manager, medic, dispatch, and head station baker I later found out. She cleaned up my elbow and gave me some fresh baked cookies and a glass of milk. The sheriff told me that he had some business to attend to and I could hang out in the station and help his deputy pick out new uniforms from a catalog while I waited for word on the status of my even crappier now company pickup. The deputy and I sat there and put together some sweet black SWAT-style tactical uniforms that we were sure would be turned down by the sheriff. Their current uniforms were brown and looked like they have been wearing them for 20 years. I figured that they were long overdue for an update. Up until this point, I already felt like I was in an old Twilight Zone episode. Anyway, the sheriff eventually returns, takes a look at our selections, and says, Pretends to be human, you are under arrest. With a stern face, he takes his keys from his belt, guides me to the holding cell, and locks me in. He then busts up laughing and tells me that his favorite color is brown and he didn't like our choices. We all had a good laugh and it turned out that he brought us all back some pizza for lunch. He let me talk to truckers that were reporting reckless drivers for a bit, and then we went to go pick up my truck. The truck had already been in really bad wrecks before and wasn't all that safe to begin with. I was half expecting the cost to be in the thousands, but I had made sure to tell them to only get it drivable so I could make it home to Oregon. When I got the bill, I was surprised that it was only $300. I called my boss and he was really peed at first. I got angry and told him that I should sue him for putting me in such an unsafe vehicle. Again, the vehicle had a bad history. He apologized, gave me a CC, and the guy that owned the shop took the CC payment on his computer in the living room of his house. When I got back, the wreck never came up again. I left that small town a different person somehow. The hospitality of those people made me appreciate small town people so much more. I never fell asleep at the wheel again. Lesson learned. So it goes. I was young and I had just gotten my first full-time job at an awesome company. 
It was a small dot-com startup, and those of us in customer support, about five people, had a running gag with the NOC team, about five people. We called them NOCBs, and they called us pool boys, even though I was the first female on the customer support team. On a dare from my supervisor, Red, not real manager, I went into the company's alias list and set up NOCBs at company.com to go to the NOC alias and poolboys at company.com to go to us. The sysadmin saw the file change and saw who changed it. Third day of work, I got a stern talking to. I went white as I saw my dream job slipping away. He saw how freaked out I was getting and said, Calm down, you're not going to get fired for this or anything, before proceeding to go further. He then called in my superior and gave him a real stern talking to as well. I ended up becoming great friends with that sysadmin and spent six wild years at that company. I use Adium to manage my IMs while I'm at work. I'm a developer. I was speaking to a project manager at a new job. I'd been there for maybe a month. She was asking me to do some tedious work that was completely unnecessary because they promised it to a client. While frustrated, I tabbed over to my girlfriend's IM to complain how frustrated I was that they were making us do all this work for basically nothing. Unfortunately, I didn't tab over. I sent the IM to the PM. My heart sunk into my stomach. Saw the little icon that showed she was typing and was like, Oh, ass, how do I cover this up before she responds? I reread the comment and noticed I used a lot of pronouns, so when she responded, she thought I was talking to her about the client. Dear Lord, I thought I'd ruined my awesome new job right after it started. I worked for a privately owned restaurant slash deli. The owners were married and terrible people. I would get a phone call and be demanded to work in the next few hours on threat of being fired if I quit. Anyways, one day I got in a big deal of trouble for giving a customer double meat without charging him. Now, I don't mean a talking to in the back office, I mean full on being screamed at in front of customers. Anyways, after I back talked, I was let go in front of a line of prospective buyers. As I walked out of the store, I looked over my shoulder and proudly said to my bosses, I pooped in the cookie dough. This was a lie, but they didn't know it. We had a huge vat of it in the back. Our cookies were very popular, so it was a big deal to them. My coworker eventually told me, and the husband and wife devil duo looked through the dough and couldn't tell what was chocolate chip and what was my poop, even though I never actually did it. They threw out the whole that, $500 to $1,000. Felt good. I am a police dispatcher, and one time at work, I was working the desk and Toys for Tots workers came in. My boss joked that I should ID them to make sure they weren't thieves. We left, and the gentleman took the 10 trash bags full of toys and left. Later that night, a man called and asked when they could pick the toys up. After telling him that two guys already picked the toys up, he informed me that we had most likely been robbed. He asked if I ID'd them and I said no. He spoke to my boss and my boss then informed me that we would probably be on the news since a police station was robbed, which was ironic, and he flipped out on me. It turns out it was an off-duty cop calling to play a prank on me. I work at a university. A vice president brought a minority student to my office and said minority student complained that I had refused to help him because I was racist. I'd actually denied the student's request because, as I'd explained to the student earlier, I wasn't permitted to fulfill his request as he hadn't paid to join the program that gave him access to what he wanted. He had thanked me for checking things out for him and answering his questions, and then left, so I was quite surprised when he came back with an irate vice president in tow. I made an exception at the vice president's request, and then spent three very tense days explaining my actions to my boss and her boss. 
It led to my boss's boss having a meeting with the helpful vice president about why we couldn't issue thousand dollar pieces of equipment to people who hadn't paid us any money for the use of them, and why my department heads didn't feel like they should fire me for following department policies. Used to work at Best Buy. Boss wouldn't give me Labor Day weekend off, but I took it off and went up north anyway. Didn't call or show up for my shift on Saturday, showed up on Monday like nothing happened. I go up front to get a flatbed cart for a customer and proceed to ride it back to my department. As I'm riding on the cart, my manager sees me and asks where I was this weekend. I yell, not here, without breaking a stride as I glide past him on the cart. We had a very brief talk and agreed it was best I leave. Felt pretty awesome, I must say. Well, this was actually kind of funny. I was hoping I didn't get fired and no one confronted me because it was not really my fault. I lived in fear of the day people would finally notice though. My company came around the call center and took pictures of people in their everyday lives in order to put on our website. Well, me being cheery and dressed in a cute dress that day, I somehow managed to be on the front of our website as the face of our company. We have a few hundred thousand visitors to our website a month. Little did they know, if you look really closely at the writing on my desk, you could see I had a bumper sticker that said, Life is too short to argue with stupid people, and I had Reddit open on my desktop. Win. I'm a medical equipment repair technician. One night, I was working on an exam light that was hanging from the ceiling in an operating room. I had a bit of it apart and was inspecting the connection between the big light head and the arm that it was suspended from when a clip popped out. The light head dropped to the floor. The arm is spring-loaded and it shot up and shattered the ceiling and five or six lights showering the operating table, anesthesia cart, and myself in ceiling tile, plastic, and glass. At first, I was in shock and what just happened didn't register in my brain. I reached down to pick up the light head, which is about three across, and grabbed the arm with my other hand. While trying to put them back together, I realize I'm coating everything in blood. The OR staff came running in and just saw me surrounded by destruction and covered in my own blood. Fortunately, the charge nurse had a sense of humor. I once was chatting with a higher-up manager about how a lot of people were away on the holidays. She said she may leave early, but was stuck pulling a couple extra hours with all the people getting their stuff handled. As she was walking away, what I wanted to say was, yeah, don't want to have anyone working harder at their job than they have to this time of year, or something like that. What came out of my mouth was, yeah, don't want to have to make you do your job. She was already around a corner by the time I got that far, so my brain made me stop talking. Then I realized what I had just said, but it was too late. She was already gone. I heard about it quite a bit from my direct supervisor later, but nothing came of it. If you want to watch the part one, click the link here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, the likes, and the comments. See you in the next video.